The news of my father's passing came unexpectedly, leaving me with a heavy heart and a mansion worth one dollar. Two million as his parting gift. The grand estate stood as a testament to my father's success in the face of life's challenges, having built a fortune from the ground up despite numerous setbacks. The inheritance was not just a physical property it was a legacy, a connection to a past filled with memories of family and perseverance. As I navigated through the paperwork and legalities that accompanied inheriting such a substantial estate, the reality of my father's absence weighed on me. The funeral was a somber affair, attended by relatives and friends who shared stories of his resilience and kindness. Amidst the condolences, my mind couldn't help but drift to the looming responsibility of managing the mansion. One evening, standing alone in the grand foyer of the mansion, I allowed myself a moment of reflection. The ornate chandelier cast a warm glow, creating a surreal atmosphere as I considered the magnitude of what I now possessed. The polished marble floors echoed the emptiness within me, the grandeur of the estate contrasting sharply with the void left by my father's departure. The estate agent, Mr. Thompson, a middle-aged man with a meticulous demeanor, guided me through the intricacies of the property. This mansion has a storied history, Miss Anderson. Your father took great pride in it, and he invested a considerable amount in maintaining its charm and opulence, he remarked, his tone a blend of professionalism and sympathy. The antique furnishings and intricate details in every room hinted at a life well lived, and I couldn't shake the feeling that the mansion held untold stories. It's overwhelming, I admitted, glancing around the expansive living room. I never imagined inheriting something of this magnitude. Mr. Thompson nodded knowingly. It's not just a house, Miss Anderson, it's a legacy. Your father built this from the ground up, and now it's yours to cherish. The weight of responsibility settled on my shoulders as I acknowledged the truth in his words. The legacy left behind was not just bricks and mortar it was a symbol of endurance and success. As I explored the rooms, a mixture of gratitude and grief enveloped me. My father's spirit lingered in every corner, and I vowed to honor his memory by preserving the essence of this inheritance. The phone rang, interrupting my thoughts. It was my husband, Norman, his voice soft but comforting. Jane, I know it's a tough time, but your father left you something incredible. Let's navigate this together. Little did I know, those words would soon be overshadowed by a storm of betrayal that awaited in the chapters ahead. The days following my father's funeral were a blur as I grappled with grief and the overwhelming responsibilities that accompanied the inheritance. The mansion, once a sanctuary of memories, became a bittersweet reminder of the loss that lingered within its opulent walls. Norman, my husband of eight years and a dedicated electrician, stood by my side as we navigated the emotional aftermath. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the estate's manicured gardens, we sat in the dimly lit study. The scent of aged leather and mahogany furniture filled the air as we sifted through my father's old letters and photographs. It's a lot to take in, Jane, Norman said, his voice gentle. But your father left you something remarkable. We can turn this mansion into a haven, a place where we build our future together. His words offered a glimmer of comfort, and for a moment, I allowed myself to believe that the mansion could be a source of solace. Little did I know that the foundations of trust were about to crumble beneath my feet. One day, as sunlight streamed through the tall windows of the living room, I received a letter from the estate agent, Mr. Thompson. The letter bore shocking news, the ownership of the mansion had been unilaterally changed, and the legal documents were already processed. Bewilderment and disbelief swept over me as I read and reread the words, hoping it was some mistake. I confronted Norman, my heart pounding with a mix of fear and anger. Norman, what is this letter? Why would the ownership of the mansion be changed without my knowledge? He feigned innocence, his eyes avoiding mine. Jane, I thought it would be easier this way. I've transferred the ownership to both our names. It's a shared legacy now. 
His attempt to cloak the betrayal in words of unity only intensified my confusion. Easier. Norman, we share everything, but you can't make such decisions without consulting me. This mansion is not just property, it's a part of my father's legacy. Norman's expression wavered between guilt and defiance. Jane, I did it for us. We can make decisions together now, as a team. The air grew heavy with tension as the weight of his actions settled in. Norman, this isn't a decision we make as a team. This is my father's legacy, and you had no right to change it without my consent. As the realization dawned, Norman's attempt to mask his true intentions crumbled. The mansion, once a symbol of potential unity, now echoed with the discord that marked the beginning of a tumultuous chapter in our lives. The sudden change had set in motion a series of events that would challenge the very foundation of our relationship. The atmosphere in the mansion had shifted, the air heavy with the weight of betrayal. With the sudden change in ownership lingering like a storm cloud, I delved into uncovering the secrets that Norman had hidden from me. Late one evening, in the dim glow of the study's antique lamp, I sat surrounded by legal documents and paperwork. Determined to unravel the mystery, I pored over every detail, my mind racing with questions. Why did Norman feel the need to change the ownership without discussing it with me? What other secrets lay beneath the surface? My investigation led me to a series of transactions that hinted at a side of Norman I never knew. Online searches and discreet inquiries revealed a darker truth, my seemingly devoted husband had been involved in gambling, a secret life that he had meticulously concealed. Confronting Norman became inevitable. In the quiet of our bedroom, the tension between us was palpable as I held the evidence in my hands. Norman, we need to talk, I said, my voice trembling with a mixture of anger and disbelief. He looked up from his workbench, his expression a mix of surprise and apprehension. Jane, what's going on? Is everything okay? I tossed the documents onto the bed, the weight of the revelations heavy in the room. Don't play innocent, Norman. I know about the gambling, about the secret transactions you've been hiding. His eyes darted to the incriminating papers, and a nervous energy filled the room. Jane, it's not what you think. I can explain. His attempt to deflect only fueled my frustration. Explain. You changed the ownership of the mansion without my knowledge, and now I find out about your hidden life. What else have you been keeping from me? Norman sighed, his shoulders slumping as the facade crumbled. Jane, I messed up. I got involved in gambling to cope with the stress. I thought changing the ownership was a way to protect us, to secure a future. I never meant for it to spiral out of control. The truth unfolded in his confession, and the gap between us widened. Norman, changing the ownership was not a solution. It was a betrayal of trust, a breach of our marriage. He reached out to me, desperation in his eyes. Jane, I messed up, but we can work through this. Let me make things right. The room echoed with the weight of his words, but the trust shattered in that moment proved irreparable. As the realization set in, the unraveling secrets marked the beginning of a new chapter, one where I had to navigate a path forward alone, leaving behind the illusions of unity that had crumbled before my eyes. The revelation of Norman's gambling and the unilateral change of mansion ownership shattered the foundation of trust that our marriage had been built upon. As the weight of his secrets pressed upon me, the decision to divorce became an inevitability. One evening, the cold glow of the mansion's grand chandelier cast eerie shadows as I sat across from Norman in the study, surrounded by the echoes of betrayal. The air was thick with tension as I broached the subject that would alter the course of our lives. Norman, we need to talk, I said, my voice steady but laced with the pain of realization. He looked up from the paperwork he was feigning interest in, a mixture of guilt and apprehension in his eyes. Jane, we can work through this. I promise I'll make things right. I couldn't bear the facade any longer. Make things right. 
Norman, changing the ownership without my consent, hiding your gambling addiction, these are not mistakes we can simply work through. They are betrayals of the deepest kind. He sighed, the weight of his actions visibly wearing on him. Jane, I never meant for it to come to this. I thought I was protecting us, securing a future. Please, let me explain. But explanations felt like feeble attempts to justify actions that had irreversibly damaged our relationship. Explanations won't undo the betrayal, Norman. Our marriage is built on trust, and you shattered that trust. I can't continue living like this. The room fell into a heavy silence, the echoes of our words hanging in the air. I felt a mix of anger, sadness, and a profound sense of loss. The decision to divorce was not only about ending a marriage it was about reclaiming my sense of self and protecting the legacy my father had left behind. Norman, realizing the gravity of the situation, pleaded, Jane, I love you. We can find a way to fix this. The sincerity in his eyes collided with the harsh reality of the choices he had made. Love is not enough when the foundation is fractured. I can't continue down a path of uncertainty and deceit. I need to reclaim what is rightfully mine. The conversation marked the beginning of the end, and as I spoke the words that would initiate the divorce proceedings, a profound sadness enveloped us both. Norman, I'm filing for divorce. It's time to face the consequences of our actions. The room seemed to close in as the weight of my decision settled. Norman's desperate pleas and promises echoed in my mind, but the choice had been made. The decision to divorce was a painful acknowledgement that our paths had diverged, and the betrayal could not be undone. The decision to divorce hung heavily in the air, and as I navigated the complex emotions that accompanied such a choice, I felt a growing need to understand the depth of Norman's betrayal. In pursuit of the truth, I embarked on a journey to investigate his past, to unravel the threads that led to this point of rupture. The study, once a place of shared contemplation, transformed into my makeshift detective headquarters. Late nights were spent scouring through old letters, examining financial records, and tracing Norman's connections. I needed to comprehend the extent of his deception and to discover if there were more layers to the secrets he had hidden. One evening, bathed in the soft glow of the study's desk lamp, I stumbled upon an old journal of Norman's. Its weathered cover hinted at years of secrets kept within its pages. As I leafed through its entries, a sense of trepidation mingled with curiosity. Norman's words, penned in moments of solitude, began to reveal a troubled soul. The phone rang, disrupting the solitude of my investigation. It was Norman, a mixture of regret and pleading in his voice. Jane, please, we can't let our marriage end like this. I promise I'll be honest with you. Just give me a chance to explain. His words tugged at the remnants of our shared history, but the wounds were too fresh. Norman, explanations won't change what you've done. I need to understand the truth, even if it hurts. The investigation led me to unexpected places, unearthing connections to a world I never knew existed. Norman's involvement in gambling, the clandestine transactions, and the extent of his financial troubles unfolded like a tragic narrative. With each revelation, I questioned the authenticity of the life we had built together. Days turned into nights as I scoured through emails, confronted individuals in Norman's past, and sought the counsel of those who might shed light on the man I thought I knew. The more I uncovered, the clearer it became that the facade of our marriage masked a complex web of deceit. One evening, as the clock ticked away the seconds, I confronted Norman with my findings. You've been living a double life, Norman. The gambling, the hidden transactions, it's all here, in black and white. He stood before me, a mixture of shame and desperation in his eyes. Jane, I never wanted you to find out like this. I thought I could fix everything on my own. His admission only fueled my resolve. Fix everything. By changing the ownership of the mansion. By keeping me in the dark about your struggles. I deserve the truth, Norman. 
The investigation, a painful journey into the heart of deception, marked a turning point. The unraveling secrets became a catalyst for my transformation, pushing me further towards a future untethered from the shadows of the past. The mansion echoed with the weight of betrayal as I confronted Norman with the findings of my investigation. The walls of the once serene study seemed to close in, creating an atmosphere charged with tension and raw emotion. I sat across from him, the old oak desk between us serving as a metaphorical divide. The evidence of his double life lay scattered on its surface, a visual representation of the shattered trust that now defined our relationship. The air was thick with unspoken words as we prepared to confront the truth. Norman, we need to talk, I said, my voice a mixture of sorrow and determination. He looked up from the scattered papers, a bead of sweat forming on his forehead as he realized the gravity of the situation. His attempt to maintain composure fell apart as he stammered, Jane, I didn't mean for you to find out like this. I thought I could fix everything without burdening you. I met his gaze, my eyes reflecting the pain of betrayal. Fix everything. By changing the ownership of the mansion. By hiding your gambling addiction. How could you think that was the right path, Norman? His eyes flickered with a mix of regret and desperation. Jane, I was drowning in debt. I thought changing the ownership would protect us. I never meant for it to spiral out of control. The room seemed to close in as the weight of his confession settled. Norman, it's not just about the mansion. You hid a part of your life from me, and I deserve to know the truth. How deep does this deception go? His shoulders slumped, defeated. Jane, I messed up. I didn't want you to worry. I thought I could handle it, but it got out of hand. The confrontation intensified as I pointed to the evidence. Handle it. You made unilateral decisions that affected both of us, decisions that went against the very foundation of our marriage. How can I trust you after this? Norman's attempt to salvage the situation fell on deaf ears. Jane, please, I love you. Let me make things right. We can work through this. The words hung in the air, a desperate plea for reconciliation. But the wounds were too deep, the betrayal too profound. Norman, trust is like a delicate glass, easily shattered. What you've done goes beyond a simple mistake. It's a breach of the vows we made to each other. As the confrontation unfolded, the realization that our paths had diverged became undeniable. The room, once a witness to shared dreams and aspirations, was now a silent spectator to the unraveling of a once-cherished bond. The decision to confront the truth marked a turning point, one that would either lead to healing or the inevitable end of a chapter in our lives. The confrontation with Norman had laid bare the irreparable fractures in our marriage. With the truth exposed, the once shared dreams and promises now seemed like distant echoes. The decision to divorce became an inevitable step, and as I initiated the legal proceedings, a new chapter unfolded, one defined by separation and the pursuit of individual paths. One morning, I sat in the cold office of a divorce attorney, the weight of the situation palpable. The lawyer, Mess. Reynolds, a stern but empathetic woman, sifted through the legal documents as she spoke, divorce is a challenging process, Miss Anderson. We need to ensure your rights are protected, especially regarding the mansion and other assets. I nodded, my mind racing with the implications of the decisions I was about to make. I want a clean break, Ms. Reynolds. I can't bear the weight of this betrayal any longer. The lawyer leaned forward, her gaze steady. It's essential to be prepared for negotiations, especially regarding the division of assets. Your husband may contest certain aspects, and we need to be ready for that possibility. The divorce process unfolded like a meticulously scripted drama. Papers were filed, court dates were set, and the mansion, once a symbol of shared aspirations, became a contested asset. As negotiations ensued, Norman's voice echoed through the legal proceedings, 
each dialogue a painful reminder of the love that had turned into discord. One evening, we found ourselves facing each other across a negotiation table, the air thick with the residue of emotions. Jane, we don't have to go through with this. We can find a way to work things out without tearing our lives apart, Norman pleaded, desperation etched on his face. I met his gaze, a mixture of sadness and resolve in my eyes. Norman, the decisions you made have already torn us apart. This divorce is about reclaiming what's left of our individual lives. He sighed, a heavy resignation settling in. I never thought it would come to this. I never wanted to hurt you. The lawyer interjected, her tone firm. Feelings aside, we need to focus on the legal aspects. Miss Anderson, are you sure about the terms you're proposing? I nodded, the weight of the decision settling on my shoulders. I want to move forward with my life. The mansion is my father's legacy, and I won't let it be marred by the shadows of deceit. The divorce proceedings were a journey through uncharted emotional terrain. Each dialogue, each negotiation, brought us closer to the finality of a chapter that had once held the promise of a shared future. As the legal intricacies unfolded, the echoes of love turned into echoes of the past, fading away in the face of an uncertain yet inevitable future. With the divorce proceedings underway, I found myself at a crossroads, a juncture where the pain of separation met the opportunity for a fresh start. Chapter 8 unfolded against the backdrop of the mansion, now solely mine, as I navigated the complexities of embracing my father's legacy. One crisp morning, sunlight filtered through the grand windows, casting a warm glow on the ornate furniture and polished floors. As I walked through the spacious rooms, memories of my father flooded my mind, his laughter, the advice he imparted, and the dreams he held for me. The mansion, once a source of turmoil, now beckoned as a canvas upon which I could paint a new beginning. In the study, surrounded by the familiar scent of leather-bound books, I spoke to my close friend, Sarah, who had been a pillar of support throughout the tumultuous journey. Sarah, it's overwhelming to be here alone. But I want to turn this mansion into something more than a relic of the past. I want it to be a place of healing. Sarah, her eyes reflecting understanding, replied, Jane, this mansion is a part of your father's legacy. It can be a sanctuary, a space where you rebuild and redefine your life. You deserve that. Encouraged by her words, I delved into plans for the mansion's transformation. Conversations with architects, interior designers, and landscapers echoed through the halls, each dialogue shaping the vision of a home that reflected my identity and aspirations. As the rooms underwent renovations, the mansion ceased to be a symbol of betrayal instead, it became a testament to resilience and the possibility of new beginnings. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, I stood on the mansion's expansive balcony, gazing at the sprawling grounds below. Norman's voice, a distant memory, seemed to fade as I whispered to myself, this is my father's gift, and I will honor it by creating a life of my own. As the mansion underwent its transformation, I discovered the therapeutic power of reclaiming space. The echoes of betrayal were replaced by the hum of construction, a symbolic reminder that even in the face of heartbreak, there existed the potential for growth and renewal. In a quiet moment of reflection, I spoke to the mansion as if it held the spirits of both my father and my past. Dad, I hope you can feel the love and dedication I'm pouring into this home. It's time to turn the page and embrace the inheritance you left me. The journey of embracing the inheritance was a poignant chapter, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the capacity to find beauty amid the ruins of the past. As the mansion transformed, so did I, stepping into the next phase of life with newfound strength and a sense of purpose. With the mansion's renovation well underway, Chapter 9 marked a pivotal moment in my journey, a chapter titled, Starting Anew. The echoes of the past, though still present, were becoming softer, replaced by the promise of a future shaped by resilience and self-discovery. As the final touches were added to the mansion's transformation, 
I found solace in the embrace of its renewed beauty. The grand chandeliers cast a warm glow on carefully selected furnishings, and the air was filled with the subtle fragrance of fresh flowers arranged in ornate vases. The mansion, once a source of pain, now stood as a testament to my ability to rise from the ashes. One sunny afternoon, I sat in the newly refurbished study, surrounded by the familiar scent of polished wood. Sarah, ever supportive, joined me, marveling at the transformation. Jane, this place is breathtaking. Your father would be proud to see what you've done. I smiled, grateful for her unwavering friendship. Thank you, Sarah. It's not just about the physical changes, it's about reclaiming this space and turning it into a home filled with positive energy. Sarah nodded, understanding the significance of the journey. You've truly embraced the inheritance, not just the mansion, but the strength your father instilled in you. This is a fresh start, Jane. The process of starting anew extended beyond the mansion's walls. I found myself exploring new opportunities and rediscovering passions that had been set aside during the tumultuous chapters of my life. The civil servant job that had provided stability became a platform for personal growth and empowerment. One evening, I met with my supervisor, Mr. Henderson, to discuss potential career advancements. Jane, your dedication and resilience have not gone unnoticed. We believe you're ready for more significant responsibilities. There's an opening for a managerial position, and we think you'd be perfect for it. Surprised but grateful for the recognition, I responded, thank you, Mr. Henderson. I appreciate the opportunity. This aligns with the fresh start I'm embracing in all aspects of my life. The conversation marked a professional milestone, a testament to the personal and career growth that had unfolded since the tumultuous events of the past chapters. The mansion, once a symbol of betrayal, now became a source of inspiration and a reflection of the strength gained through adversity. In the quiet moments, I found myself standing on the mansion's balcony, gazing at the horizon. The sunsets, once accompanied by the weight of past grievances, now offered a canvas for envisioning a brighter tomorrow. Starting anew isn't about erasing the past, it's about building a future that honors the lessons learned, I whispered to the fading sunlight. The journey of starting anew was a continuous exploration of self-discovery, resilience, and the transformative power of embracing life's uncertainties. As the mansion stood as a beacon of personal triumph, I stepped into the next chapter with a renewed sense of purpose and the anticipation of untold possibilities. Chapter 10, A Bright Future The Mansion, once a symbol of betrayal, had undergone a remarkable metamorphosis. The grandeur of its renewed interiors reflected not only a commitment to aesthetic beauty but also an internal transformation. As I stood in the midst of the elegantly decorated rooms, the echoes of the past were replaced by the anticipation of a promising future. One morning, Sarah visited to witness the culmination of this arduous journey. She walked through the meticulously curated spaces, her eyes wide with admiration. Jane, this is more than just a mansion it's a reflection of your strength and resilience. Your father would be overjoyed to see the beauty you've created. I smiled, acknowledging the significance of the moment. It's not just about the physical changes, Sarah. It's about turning this space into a home filled with positive energy and the promise of a bright future. Sarah nodded in agreement. You've transformed this place into a sanctuary, not just for yourself but for everyone who steps through these doors. It's a testament to the healing power of embracing one's journey. As the mansion thrived in its newfound identity, so did my personal and professional life. The civil servant position, now accompanied by a managerial role, opened doors to challenges and opportunities. In a meeting with my team, I shared the vision for the future. We've faced challenges together, and now, as we move forward, let's focus on growth, collaboration, and creating a positive work environment. The team responded with enthusiasm, recognizing the evolution that had taken place. A colleague, Alex, spoke up, Jane, it's inspiring to see the changes you've brought not just to the mansion but to our work culture. 
It feels like a new beginning for all of us. The bright future extended beyond the professional realm. A chance encounter at a local art exhibition led to a budding romance with a kindred spirit, Mark. Our shared interests and aspirations created a connection that felt like a breath of fresh air. In a quiet moment, Mark expressed, Jane, your journey is a testament to the strength of the human spirit. I'm honored to be a part of this new chapter in your life. The mansion, now a hub of positivity and growth, became a space for gatherings, celebrations, and the forging of new connections. It was a living testament to the idea that even in the face of betrayal and adversity, one could carve out a future filled with hope and resilience. As the story drew to a close, I found myself standing on the mansion's balcony, gazing at the horizon once more. The sunsets, now accompanied by a sense of accomplishment, whispered promises of untold possibilities. A bright future isn't just a concept it's a journey we create with each step forward, I mused, embracing the uncertainty of the road ahead. As the doors of the mansion opened to the world, I stepped into the future with gratitude for the lessons learned, the strength gained, and the promise of brighter days ahead.